another day, another headline, and more of India's daughters let down. Horrific rapes and murders are being reported with such alarming regularity that one wonders if we are getting desensitized. Well, we shouldn't. Two girls from the SC community aged 15 and 17 were raped, murdered and then hung from trees so that the heinous crime could be covered up as a suicide. This took place in UP's Lakhimpur Kheri. 24 hours after the outrage, six accused have been caught and the police promise punishment and such harsh punishment that their future generations to come will remember. What is truly dismaying though is how the entire conversation today is not how did this happen, why are we seeing this sick modus operandi of raping, murdering and then hanging minor girls in a cover-up bid again and again. Instead, today, the conversation is about the religion of the accused, the politics of who runs that state. Our public discourse is today feasting on this heinous crime like vultures trying to find a culprit depending on which party we like and which religion we want to attack. I wish this was the only heinous crime I had to report on today. In Telangana, a 13-year-old was out to buy medicine two days ago. She was abducted by two men who drugged and raped her. A day later, the men called her mother and dropped her off. The two men have now been detained. The rape and often murder of minor girls in India is unfortunately not as uncommon as it should be. And every time, the response is piecemeal. In 2013, in the aftermath of the Nirbhaya case, a death penalty was added as a punishment for rape for repeated offenders or where the rape left the victim in a vegetative case. In cases where rape led to death, in 2018, the death penalty was also added for rape of a girl below the age of 12 years. So, there is no doubt that our laws are stringent. But is it helping? As per NCRB data, cases for murder and rape were 284 in 2021. That's the latest data that we have. This is up from 219 in 2020. Total rapes were 31,677. Also an increase from 2020, which saw 28,046 rapes. Now, the 2020 number in both cases are fewer also because there was a lockdown for months. Just think about that. There were less rapes and murders in the year of the pandemic because people were forced to stay in their homes. What does that tell you about women's safety in this country? So why is no one talking today about how to prevent the next heinous rape and murder? Instead of crowing about how soon they nab the current perpetrators. To speak on this, I'm joined today by Sunita Krishnan. She's a Padma Shri recipient and social activist. Shamina Shafiq, ex-NCW member, is joining me on the show. Kasturi Shankar, actor, is with us today. And I'm also speaking with Talish Ray, an advocate on the show. Welcome to all of you. And thank you for speaking with us today. Let me first uh, go across uh, to Shamina. Shamina ji, another case which has come up. And my question is that nobody is asking how we can prevent the next one. Obviously, the reportage will be about what happened, where did this happen. Fingers will be pointed at, uh, you know, the local governments because law and order is a state subject. And then the local governments and the police come and say that, look, we've cracked the case. But is anybody looking at the large numbers and how these heinous crimes are being reported more and more? I hate to say this, but you know what? Seemingly, it uh, looks as if, I mean, now uh, the, the government and also sometimes the agencies which are supposed to ensure that there is prevention against crime against women are actually ensuring that or somehow trying to find ways and means as to how the perpetrators are of crime are out on uh, from the jail. I mean, look at the Gujarat case. The convicted uh, perpetrators convicted by the court of law were actually released with the help of the state government and they were garlanded. So actually, if politics is... Uh, supporting uh, the release of the criminals, so be it. If politics uh, is helped by uh, ensuring that the perpetrators of crime are actually uh, uh, not uh, brought to books, 
it is okay for the government so why do we actually talk to the government or talk about the the police agencies is because it is their duty to prevent crime against women not just nab the criminals because nabbing the criminal is going to happen only after the crime is committed upon as you very rightly said in the case of up and especially of lakhimpur which is an adjoining district to my district let me tell you there have been cases after cases after cases media picks up the stories we talk about it police says oh see we have not the criminals nobody talks about later on as to whether the charge sheet was filed in time whether the the perpetrators were actually uh, booked properly the the proper ipc sections were put in place or not nobody is actually looking into it and the police for that matter it's their duty their responsibility to put in place a b c as to what actions they are going to ensure my question is my question is a broader women. one on safety of women because we keep talking about this again and again yes. we need to understand and and i'm going to go across to talish ray uh, who's with me on the show that the way a civilized society deals with crime prevention is with law you have stringent laws as deterrents so that people don't want to you know commit the crime again they think twice about it they know they will get caught isn't that loop broken absolutely if you are looking at in terms of uh, law being a preventive factor and as you rightly pointed out post the varma committee report uh, laws were implemented they were changed the criminal amendment act came about and then there have been significant changes that have come about later but in order for any law to become effective then justice must not only be done it must be seen to be done and justice which is delayed is often justice denied so it brings us back to the same question which i have been talking about again. Again and again, which is that where are the fast track courts? Today, somebody may get nabbed, but what happens in terms of the procedural part of it? When do they get convicted? How long does it take? I mean, how often do they come out on bail? What happens afterwards? What is the reformative part that is taking place? What is the chilling effect that happens? Because today, if uh, uh, if there is a crime against a woman. what what is the recourse that is there so sure they go to the police authorities the police authorities make a report and then it lies within the the justice system which itself takes so much of time for justice to be delivered that often it becomes counterproductive and when it does come in what happens is that very often we have a lot of noise that gets made about let us hang the rapist now the problem with that also is that the moment you have extreme deterrent penalty then there is an encouragement that in instead of letting the victim go and and report about it it is simpler to kill the person than to no, allow so, such Talish, an evidence i actually want to ask you about that because i mentioned in my introduction as well that after nirbhaya we added the death penalty in certain yes. cases yes but is there any evidence to show that this has actually led to an increase of what you are saying that rapes are now more and more being accompanied with murder to destroy the evidence so in terms of evidence if you're talking about in india i think uh, we have to acknowledge that our our mechanism in terms of how we look at crime uh, records is a slightly weak one which uh, with just the national crime record bureau which is reporting the numbers and those numbers incidentally are the tip of the glacier uh not yeah. every every person who goes into a police station will be able to get across an fir and it will be able to put across long before that it is done over and it's not talked about at all so that's one part of it but all over the world if you look at the jurisprudence of it there is a specific school of thought which believes that if you have such harsh penalty then the likelihood of a backlash upon the victim is likely to increase and this this baying for blood that happens as you talked about you know we, we come in and we are absolutely outraged we want to hang the murders it's a very simple thing instead of trying to address the cause that women are actually unsafe in the social scenario that we have today you have on the one hand we talk about uh, you know beti bachao beti padhao we, are, we we have very many measures that are there for women but the basic safety that might be there the basic safety no, you know, of being is, able to step out what is even out. what is even more dismaying and alarming is now we have started first looking at the names of the perpetrators absolutely. to see what religion absolutely. they belong to absolutely then and we I want to, to see no no then we want to see in which state was this heinous crime committed who is the chief minister what party do they belong to 
and then people will craft their response depending on how they feel yes, about so that, these factors. Yes, so that narrative actually is erroneous because if you look at it, there is only one cause of rape and that is the rapist himself or herself, as the case may be. And somewhere we take that away that this is a person who has chosen to become a criminal, has chosen to violate a boundary of another person, has chosen to commit a crime, rather than looking at various other extraneous factors, starting very at, at the very base in terms of looking at the circumstances. So that is an acknowledgement and, and there needs to be a deep think. There needs to be a deep think because how are we raising our generations? It's, it's, become, it's become, as you rightly pointed out, we're completely desensitized about it. And this, when we've had a record, we've had a record where we had to bring about criminal amendment. If you remember the Criminal Amendment Act of 2013 came post the Justice Varma Committee report. And the Ju yeah. Justice Varma Committee was formed because women went and stood, people stood at the Rajpath and said that we, they've had enough. They've, it was a leaderless yeah. uh, 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 movement that started, which said- I want, to, this, I this want is... to I want to welcome Sunita Krishnan to the show. We've managed to sort out uh, that audio issue. Sunita Krishnan is a Padma Shri recipient, social activist, and I would say someone who's lived and breathed this struggle that women have every day. She's worked tirelessly and extensively for the upliftment of um, you know, the weaker sections of society. Sunita Ji, thank you so much for speaking with us today on the show. Uh, truly glad you could make, a, make the time to speak on what is a very, very important issue. Do you think it's, it's now crucial to stop just looking at these cases as isolated incidents? There is a malaise in our society, isn't it? I think it's the way things are going right now it is going through a very scary trend. Um, there's a whole environment and ecosystem built where the victims are again and again indoctrinated to believe that they have to live in fear and they will never get justice. Whether it is uh, Bilkis Bano case, whether it is Hatras case, whether it is now the Lakhimpur case, you know, where everybody is again and again giving the same impression that the victims have to live in absolute fear. The second thing that really bothers me is the impunity with which such crimes happen across the country. It is not about one state. It is not about one region. Across the country, you will see the kind of impunity with which such crimes are happening. Now, for me, what is more worrying is how these cases then become a pawn in the hands of political leaders. So much so that victims have started now thinking that only if your cases get really, you know, uh, blown out of proportion or in proportion on the media and there is a huge sensation across it, only then you may get access to compensation or anything from the system. So somewhere as a criminal justice system and the entire red tapeism in the criminal justice system, somewhere we have failed the victims. And that is the reason for no deterrence in our society. And that is also simultaneously the reason for the absolute impunity of such perpetrators who believe they can do it, get away with it, and nobody will touch them. Even if they are arrested, they will get a bail soon. And even if they are convicted, they will come out soon. You know, there is nothing that, you know, it can, you know, stop them from living a full liberty. Uh, liberated life, but at the same time, a victim of rape or gang rape for her lifetime, for many, many decades, have to live in fear. This is this is what is bothering me, and what bothers me, uh, uh, you know, I, I have survived this experience myself. 35 yes. years later, I don't see any big difference. What happened to me 35 years back and what is happening now, 35 years later, there's no, no big change for what, what a victim goes through, either in the hands of the society, in the hands of the community, or in the hands of the criminal justice system. And that raises question not only about the system and the governance, but 
us as society as a large you know somewhere somewhere we all are collectively failing meaning i don't want to you point know, the so, fingers at this system or that no, system no you know you so, sunita ji you talked about what you experienced 35 years ago where you were helping tribal communities and because your courage scared people men in that area they targeted you you were made a survivor and you continued with strength to help more and more people i mean hats off and of course you're a padma shri recipient and you know a model for all of us but i want to come back to what you said you're saying 35 years later nothing has changed and that really is the perspective i want to understand the laws have become more stringent but nothing has changed new slogans have come but nothing has changed new governments have come but nothing has changed so who is talking about how to change this so the question here is if the laws have changed but has the implementation changed has the criminal justice response changed have the stakeholders inside the system changed they have not if a poxo victim who is 6 year old in gang rape is waiting for her you know uh, trial to begin even when she is 11 or 12 years old what has changed so you know we may have lot of new new papers and new new slogans and new new narratives about it but ultimately the actual thing comes on how do we implement it that means what is our will to change these things you know and will comes from political will will comes from the social will the community's will and the will of america you know today if we i mean i'm not in a position to you know say uh, you know this government is bad or that government is bad we the we are the characters who are electing these governments so somewhere when there is no will for the society to change the status of women and believes no. that crime against women is a normalized thing you know and now trying to camouflage it into very liberal uh, language you know at the ground of it nothing has changed mindset of the man has not changed mindset of the boy has not changed all that we perpetuate within our own families within our own communities within our own societies so until and unless we don't challenge that at the very root level nothing is going to change you know kasturi shankar kasturi shankar yes kasturi shankar is uh, is with us kasturi shankar the first response you see now to this is the local administration wherever it is wanting to very quickly say that we've got the culprit which is good of course they should no one is saying that they shouldn't but doesn't a parallel conversation and movement have to continue to make sure people feel safe i mean look at the case in hyderabad a child a young girl cannot go down to the store to buy medicines how will anyone let their daughters their young children out of the house without feeling afraid so you see these cases cutting across regional lines class society religion if you're a woman you're unsafe that's the message today isn't it kasturi ji can you hear me i think you're on mute ma'am There you go. I'm so sorry. Uh, you can hear me now, right? Yes, I can. Um, it is with extreme angst that I accept every word of what you just said. You put it so well, and it's very, very unfortunate that when it comes to India, I think it's a malaise that plagues. all of our country mentality that we give so much liberty men can get away with murder literally murder rape they can get away with being completely irresponsible socially towards the women of their own family even at the end of the day who is held accountable for all this i mean we keep saying yes culprits are caught even in hyderabad uh, when the encounter took place of the young techy who was uh, gang raped a few years ago I thought to myself I'm a resident of Hyderabad I thought to myself this is great I mean they shot those guys like dogs and this is going to be a warning to anybody thinking of such heinous crimes in the future but 
No, it got worse. So I think it's just everything put into one cauldron and coming up, peaking at the wrong time. I think there is a migrant issue. I think people going from one place to another, uh, juxtaposing cultures, uh, awareness is not there. Then there is the well ingrained uh, patriarchal feeling in us, the male male mentality, so to speak. There is uh, not enough. In, there is not enough uh, punishment. There is not enough. Uh, first of all, the law is not passed. I mean, yes, these people have gotten arrested today, but this is after public outrage. This is after media like you brought the issue up. Otherwise, um, I fear to say, I mean, Tamana, you brought up the question of whether uh, people watch, people see what state it is, who is the chief minister, what is the religion, what is the caste of the perpetrators. Yeah. Today, I'll I'll say this, and it is shameful. This, this is a crime that has taken place in Uttar Pradesh, and Uttar Pradesh has been seeing a spike in crime. Every day we hear at least something horrible from there. And today, every day, people who are going uh, crazy on social media, going uh, politically charged statements about Bilkit Banu last month, are keeping mum today. Why? Because the perpetrators are Muslim? Why? Why does that make a difference? Suddenly, no, the Dalit Kasturi, rights but, have to No, take but Kasturi, I want to ask you, why does it make a difference to you what people are saying on social media? No, I feel that I feel some. No, no I'm glad you brought this up. I'm glad you brought this up. How does it matter? No, no, one minute, one minute. How does it matter what someone says or doesn't say on social media? Why does it matter that the perpetrators are Muslim? Are you saying it matters if the perpetrators are Muslim? I'm saying there are some crimes that get the attention of the public, that get flashed in the media for a certain reason. And that has to change. We have to be impervious. Ma'am, law and order I is the media's we, job we or it is the government's it. job? Whose job is no, it? No, it, it I, Whose everybody job is, is it? To blame. Everybody no, is no. to blame. Even the very no, first no, 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 everybody is not to blame. Of. The victims are not to blame. <laughs> People, it's, it's, uh, the ordinary people of this country well, are not I'm, to blame. You know, I'm sure you start to blame. No, I think no, people no, who no, are no. diverting Me, the attention you, from the issue I, are to blame. As an ordinary, as an ordinary housewife, as a, as a mother, I am to blame if I do not teach my male children how to treat the women of India. Every mother in this country is responsible for the next generation of men. They are responsible for the safety of women in Ma'am, India. Poor we mothers are, are bearing yeah, enough burden. You are saying <laughs> even fixing crime against women are mothers' problem. I want to get more views on this. I want to get more views on this. Let me come. Let me come now to Shamina Shafiq for some of the responses to what Kasturi Ji has said. She is very upset that some people have spoken about Bilkis Banu, but have not spoken about what is the religion of the people in Lakhimpur Kheri. My question, how does it matter if someone said or didn't say anything on social media? See, Will it help anyone? See, is it going to prevent the next crime? Who is answering the question, what will prevent the next crime? Yes, Shamina. A rapist is a rapist, period. There is no question about as to which state he belongs, which religion he belongs, what age he belongs. A rapist is a rapist and should be held accountable for and should be punished for. And a, a victim who is at the receiving end is a victim, is a survivor, irrespective of her age, her caste, her religion. But we cannot deny that in this country, when we talk about some Dalit uh, girls, women, they are definitely at higher risk. And it is not because of a certain state, but because of their individual identity of a particular religion. But when you treat a criminal as belonging to A religion or B religion, I'm sorry, it doesn't work like this. A criminal is a criminal, whether it is a, a, a Muslim or a Hindu or a Christian, he should be punished. And it the discourse should not be about his religion. The discourse should be how can we prevent crime against women, especially rape. It's a disease. It's not about raping someone's body. It's about raping, raping someone's soul as well. It's about the entire family at the receiving end. It's about facing the criminal justice system after 
being raped because it's the survivor who no, no. has to face. You know, you know, you know what bothers so, me. Entire... What bothers, what really bothers me even more. One minute, Chamina ji, I want to come to Talish on this. What bothers me even more is. On and off, you read reports about how in some courtroom or the other, the judge has come and said that the accused of rape should marry the survivor. Absolutely. You should marry Absolutely. the survivor. Absolutely. That's most insensitive. So, so if, you, that, if you ask, that's, ask that me... Just in, it's, I, yeah. I'm incensed when I hear that. Because yes, what, uh, are you, what yeah. are you trying to say? Yes, yeah. Talish. Yeah, uh, so another I, judge, very rare. esteemed judge from Kerala, says that you know a uh, rape, uh, uh, rape accused or a um, um, sexual assault uh, uh, accused was given bail on, uh, and the rider he said is if women wear such provocative clothes, clothes, you know yes. that also yeah. has yes. to be questioned. Yes. So, so this is the mindset. One minute. Question is to Talish. Let let us yeah. speak. Yes. So so it is actually very problematic because it's not just about marrying. There is another that was there in Jharkhand where they said that come back and entire Raki that happened in MP as well. So this entire mentality that this is not a person. This is a problem to be managed. This is not a crime against a per person that's happening. And that that actually shows the mindset that's there because you are looking at the judiciary. We look upon the judiciary as some things that that bring in uh, the the fact that are put in into the constitution, the, the primary one of which under Article 14 is the right to equality. Uh, beyond that, when, when we see this attitude which is reflective, we have failed. We have failed in being able to bring them up to the mark about the politics of the violence itself. We have failed to recognize the intersectionality that certain privileges or dis, uh, uh, not uh, non-privileges uh, lend to certain identities which leads them to being more vulnerable. And you have problematic statements all over the place, even though as well-meaning as they may, might be, I have uh, to my fellow panelists, I'm so sorry, I am also a mother and I am not responsible for a rapist. Yes, I have to raise my children correctly and yes, I have to give them values, but their father is equally responsible. The society is Kasturi equally Jee. responsible. The school Kasturi is equally, Jee, you want to respond to is, that? is equally responsible. I am uh, so sorry. I'm I holding know, everybody I'm responsible, ma'am. Of course, no, the father okay. is responsible. Okay, she heard you, Talish, she heard you. She heard you, let her respond. You, you said something specifically about her comment. Response. Let her respond. Yes, yes, Kasturiji. Now my, you can start. My, my statement was in response to Tamana's statement that the government is responsible for quelling crime. No, the people, this, every citizen of India is responsible for how our society behaves. Our society is rotten to the core. The men have zero consequences, and that's not just men being responsible. That is, women are responsible for that as well. And I need that how? to be. I don't know how? How? Many how? Times I can you can that. you explain? But how can you explain how women are responsible for being raped? Because we empower. It may not be you or me, but look at the kind of rapists we have. People across educational profiles, across caste profiles, across uh, economic profiles, anywhere, geographic location. The, the only common denominator is. If there is somebody in a vulnerable position, these men take advantage. There is a guy in Kerala who's a public figure, flashing, an act of flashing class children, school children. There is a writer known for his social activism, uh, 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 raping a person. Uh, yes, but you are saying that I'm women not. are equally responsible. Why are you saying women are responsible for the actions of these individuals? And I want to say over here, I don't think we should make this about all men, all men, it is about individuals who make incorrect choices and criminal choices. One minute, one minute. Kasturi ji, let's not talk over each other. I think we're trying, we're trying to say the same things. One minute. Kasturi ji, first, please calm down. One minute. First, calm down. First, calm down. Let's all take a deep breath. I'm not worked Let's take a deep breath. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I just want to add a rider over here because you kept saying these men. Let's not generalize over here. There are criminals, and they are criminals who need to be dealt with as per the law. The question that I'm asking today is that why is the law, civil society, governments, everyone who seems to be with the right intent, families, culture, why is everyone failing? There must be a reason why there is a failure, right? What is that reason is the question I'm asking. Let me go to Sunita Krishnan. Let me go to Sunita Krishnan on this. Where do you think the problem exists? And do you think, like Kasturi is saying, it's because 
the attitude is that a man can get away with it i think you know first of all there is no doubt in my mind that the community will and the social will towards ending sex crimes against women and children is paramount in all this matters if that will is not there that our women our children our girls are not to be violated you know that is a collective will of the society and the community that is something that we need to cultivate a zero tolerance to any crime against women and girls somewhere we don't have that now what we don't have that vested interest make best use of they politicize they distract us they deviate us and because we don't have the will we also get distracted and deviated and that is why you know why bilkis banu why so and so why that why this these kind of questions come for me victim is a victim and a rapist is a rapist a rapist has no religion no caste he's a perpetrator of crime and and i believe that we as a society we have so easily created an ecosystem where the victim has to fear but we have not been able to create an ecosystem where the perpetrator has to fear and say okay this is not done if i do this you know somewhere my social standing my my community standing everything will fall down i will not be able to walk on the street we have somehow given an impression all of us together men women everybody together is that you can do it you can get away with it and none of us will point a finger finger at you maybe we will try to even justify your action and saying that she must be at fault and things like that so somewhere i believe that our collective will has to stand if our collective will stands up automatically we are the part we are the people who sit in the criminal justice system we are the ones who become political leaders we are the ones who become advocates we are the ones who govern everything will change and that is where i i predominantly believe that it has to start with each one of us men women children of this nation something as that's simple that's also what kasturi is saying yeah that's that's i think that is what kasturi is trying to say maybe in a different way that sorry we can't go around pointing fingers don't you think that the conversation you're talking about why did someone talk about bilkis banu but not about lakhimpur keri and the religion of the perpetrators don't you think that's a distraction from the core issue now that you've heard everyone's point of view i'll come back to a statement you made when you started your comments yes. do you think that's the most important thing today ki no, kisne kya tweet kiya do you honestly think that Yes, I have been tracking crimes against women for the past four years, and I have seen there is a very, very drastic difference in the way crimes against women are covered based on who the perpetrators are or who the action is against and where it is conducted. Um, uh, it, in fact, this news um, it it may come as a surprise to you. News is uh, people who were taking certain news from Uttar Pradesh till yesterday have all gone silent today. Media no, handles. I, oh, that's media not the question handles. I asked you, Kasturi ji. I said, no, I said, is that the most women. important thing? I. That's not the question I asked I you. I asked you, most, is that the most important thing for you? Is that the most important thing for you? So if if the be. people you want say what you want, is your worry for the women of this country over? I want every crime against women dealt equally, equilaterally, with the same indiscriminately. I want every sexual assault to get the same amount of attention in the society, so that taaki ham kuch badle, so that we can make the choice, make the changes. So you think that these people on make. social media, who I don't know who these people are, who you seem to be so upset with, they Not are the ones who are going to make media. the change. No, no, they are the ones Main who are going to make the change. Not you. We. I'm so proud of Mirror now for taking uh, up the uh, issue. Do, no, no, I'm not so understanding like why the. You know, you know why I wanted to talk about this today, is to highlight how it just keeps going on and on and on. If anyone has been tracking this carefully, look at this new modus operandi. Look at this new modus operandi now where you rape, you murder. 
and then you hang to make it look like a suicide. You may you do that to make it look like a suicide. I'm going to come back to Sunita on this. In you Hyderabad, they burn the victim. Then create you yeah you try and cover it up to make it look like a suicide. This is a new modus operandi. Is anyone looking into this? It is not a this? new modus operandi. It is not a new modus operandi. It is an old modus operandi. But this case has got highlight. Another modus operandi that has been used is rape the person. record the video circulate yes. the video on whatsapp and things like that so that the victim is intimidated for a lifetime you know so i feel somewhere you know tamanna instead of getting caught and trapped in so much of distractive tactics can we all collectively mm. start looking at tangibles that can bring change for example can we all lobby together for a sex offenders register where convicted sex offenders are publicly shamed and named and every citizen of this country will know the name this is happening in several countries more than 32 countries have sex offenders register where sex offenders are tracked the convicted ones not the alleged accused can we put our energies in, you know instead of saying who said what and who who did not say what can we use our voice as Our influence, our connections, oh, sure. to lobby yeah, for something that will bring some benefit. You know, I refuse to believe there is anyone who doesn't want these crimes to stop today. I don't think there is anyone out there. They should be focusing their energies on solutions, on how to make the crime stop, instead of figuring out. the next social media linchpin i want to end it there but i want to thank all of you for joining us today on the discussion on beyond the headlines we hope we've truly gone beyond just that headline that you may have been seeing today